And joining us now on the line to continue the big day, he is Paul Kelly. He is the executive director of College Hockey, Inc., uh, which is a mar- the marketing arm of the NCAA. And he joins us now on Puck Daddy Radio with Greg Wyshynski and Rob Pizzo. How are you, Paul? I'm fine, Greg. How are you? Fantastic, sir. Now, uh, Paul, I am from New Jersey. Rob Pizzo is from Canada. And I was I was wondering if you could tell me, when the United States success, successfully defends the World Junior Championship this uh, this year, how should I celebrate? Should it be bigger than last year? Should I go more grandiose? Maybe buy a <sighs> billboard somewhere in Toronto? <laughs> You know, I, I, I believe in being uh, civil and friendly towards, uh, towards our friends there in Canada. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it is going to be a great tournament. I, you know what, uh, the U.S. lost last night when they played RPI, so I, I don't think anything is a given. And, uh, you know, there's some, there's some good hockey teams, not just Canada and the U.S., but uh, Swedes will be strong, the Russians will be strong, I think the Czechs will be strong. So <clears throat> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a fun watch. I'm glad, Greg, that you threw Canada in there. Like, you know, I'm from New Jersey, and he's from Canada. Like, the little old, <laughs> like, it's a, the city of Canada. Thank you very much. Yeah, but, but that's, 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 more, that's more about people from Jersey thinking that we're our own country than anything else. I mean, that's what that comes down to. But, uh, hey, hey, Paul, Paul, I think I saw uh, 23 of 29 players on the preliminary U.S. World Junior roster had ties to the NCAA. You combine that with the, the, uh, the NCAA impact on the draft last summer. Where is college hockey right now in the U.S. as far as its impact uh, in producing talent, let's say, for a world junior and then eventually for an NHL level? Well, it's expanding. Uh, you know, there was an article just a couple of weeks ago by Kevin Allen, that noted writer with the USA Today, on um, not only the current number of uh, <clears throat> NHL players who came from NCAA programs, but what the trends are into the future and what what USA Today's research showed was that uh, currently there are 28.5 percent of all players in the NHL played college hockey in the United States. Um, that number at the end of last season was actually over 30 percent because what <clears throat> what happens is when the college season ends, a number of the NHL teams sweep in and they pull their draft choices out and or they sign unrestricted, uh, undrafted free agents, and so the number will go from 28.5 to somewhere in the low 30s. So almost a third of all NHL players, you know, come from NCAA college hockey. You can go back 25 years and count probably on two hands the number of college hockey guys. And if you look at <clears throat> the number of college players who are, uh, you know, within the uh, control of NHL teams, n- namely on their kind of larger 60-man rosters playing for their American Hockey League affiliates and the like, um, you know, you're going to see an in- increase in the number of college players steadily. I-, I-, I can see it going to certainly to 35, 40 percent within the next few years, uh, wow. which I think is a good thing. Uh, with respect to the junior, you know, rosters, uh, you know, uh, I was actually quite heartened to see that, that, you know, there are two college guys on the Canadian roster and as well as 23 or so on the uh, on the tryout roster for the U.S. So. Uh, uh, will be will be well, well represented at the tournament. Paul Kelly of uh, College Hockey Inc. joining us on Puck Daddy Radio. Uh, obviously, one of the big pieces of news about college hockey in the U.S. recently is the development of a D1 program at Penn State University. Uh, that's obviously a, a, a hockey market, let's say, being in Western PA. I wanted to ask you kind of a two-parter. First, your thoughts on the Penn State news, and second. Do you envision other D1 programs in let's let's call them non-traditional areas of the United States developing ice hockey teams, say in the next ten years? Yeah, the, the Penn State's a huge development because number one, it's a it's a it's a massive school. It's 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 well known not only as a solid academic institution but a first-rate athletic uh, institution as well. And so, I think when it, when Penn State announces what it's doing, not just starting a program but <clears throat> building a, a shiny new rink on campus. It does provide impetus for a number of the other schools around the country that have been thinking along the same lines to perhaps make the switch, particularly if they're in in the Big Ten Conference. Uh, you know, some of those schools that, that might actually consider, since they see on the horizon the, the forming of a Big Ten Conference with teams like Michigan and Ohio State and Wisconsin and some of those hockey powers. Um, you know, the, I don't see it happening at a lot of public universities, absent a, a major benefactor coming in 
and making a donation like you had at Penn State. I mean, uh, Mr. Pagula is is donating eighty eight million dollars towards the building of that rink and and the starting of that program. It, it's because the you know because of the down economy, the public universities are really struggling for funds. So where you'll see it <clears throat> will be the large private universities that will seriously consider it. So. You know, you've got to go to a place like USC. Um, you know, you might have to go to out in the northwest up to Gonzaga University or Northwestern in in Illinois. Um, you know, places where there are private universities which have large endowments and, and better funding than public institutions. Because right now, a, a public university which is being supported by the taxpayers of the United States wouldn't be able to justify starting hockey, which is a very expensive proposition. Paul Kelly joining us from College Hockey Inc. Now, Paul, I want to shift gears just a little bit. You are the former executive director of the NHLPA, and this weekend big news came in that uh, officially Donald Fair is now uh, taking over your former position. Now, to say that the PA has been maybe a soap opera over the last 10 years might even be a little bit of an understatement. We've talked about the PA for a number of years, things like emails being read and money being misspent. And now we've got someone in place in Donald Fear. Uh, the players seem to overwhelmingly want him in there. Do you think a change like this can, can right this ship, can make this right so that people don't look at the NH- NHLPA as kind of something that just is not going right? Well, I think the, 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 probably the more important news is the fact that they've adopted a new constitution. I mean, uh, you know, they took the constitution which was in place the last few years, which which frankly has proven to be a just a debacle. It was just a it was a reaction to uh, what occurred in the aftermath of the lockout with Bob Goodnow and with Ted Saskin, and and so they put in place a a structure which was intended to to you know. Uh, make someone totally accountable but it just was an unworkable situation and and that's now been changed and and so uh you know Don Fear uh, who's a very smart guy and obviously <clears throat> you're not going to find a more experienced uh you know sports labor union guy than Don you know other than Marvin Mitchell who uh, you know who's, who's Marvin's not going to come out and and do this kind of work but uh, but I I think Don has the tools in place I mean he's he's now got a structure he's got the power the control the authority that uh uh, certainly was lacking when when I was there at the Players Association. I, I think what's incumbent upon Don in the coming months is, number one, he's got to put in place a staff. Uh, he's got some holes in the staff there. Um, you know, some of the key people uh, have left. Uh, he's going to have to fill those voids uh, both in the player area uh, as well as in the legal area, as well as in the financial uh, forensic accounting area as well. And then I think uh, most importantly, Don uh, has to learn the issues. Uh, I don't know how much he knows about the sport. I don't think he's ever played it or coached it, but he needs to understand what the challenges are in the sport, what some of the economics are. And then finally, in this part, I know he grasps, which is, you know, he's got to get the guys more involved and more invigorated. I mean, players need to pay more attention. I mean, it, it, it's hard, partly because of the history of the NHLPA. You know, players have grown somewhat disillusioned and haven't wanted to involve themselves in union business. Plus, the fact that you know many of these guys are very young and they're they're more interested in staying healthy and staying on roster and 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 being competitive, and they they don't like to get bogged down with union business. But you know, we're at a point in time, a couple of years away from the end of the current CBA, that the players they have to pay attention, and and Don's job is going to be to. Uh, engage them, uh, educate them, um, hear their reactions to, to various proposals and issues, and, and, and try to build a consensus. Uh, so it, it's a challenge. I mean, Don's going to have his hands full, but, but, but he's a very smart, very capable guy. And I think that when you combine the new structure uh, you know, with a talented guy, I, I think you're, you're in for a period of relative calm, although that's not to say there aren't really difficult issues facing the sport. I mean, it's uh, it, it's going to be tough to come to some consensus here uh, that's acceptable to both sides. Paul, do you know Don personally? I do. Have you talked to him since he uh, officially took over the position? I have not. No, I have not spoken to him since uh, Friday or Saturday when it was uh, officially announced. But obviously, uh, you know, he was running baseball when I was running hockey. And, uh, you know, uh, I had more contact actually with the football guys, uh, you know, Gene Upshaw and then his successor, D. Smith, than I did with baseball just by virtue of 
you know the the, the nature of our sports and the timing of things. Uh, but uh, yes, no, I'm I'm well acquainted with Don. So I, I know you, you uh, I know you mentioned a few things there that you, you think he's got to do, but just uh, as someone who knows him, friend to friend, aside from the the technical things about running the NHLPA, if you were to have the conversation with him now and he kind of just says, you know, any advice, what what could you tell him? Well, he's got a he's got to hire people, a couple of people, you know, with whom he has absolute trust and confidence um, that can work very closely with him in facing some of the challenging issues that he has ahead. Uh, that would be the first piece of advice. The second piece of advice I would give him was is not only must he reach out um, to his own membership and, and, and talk extensively to the players and to the, and to the advisors and agents of those players, <clears throat> but he needs to reach across the management line and make sure that he talks with not just the leadership at the NHL offices in New York, but also the owners and managers in the sport. Um, <clears throat> I mean, he needs to sit down with guys that, like Lou Lamorello and and some of the owners that have been around for many many years, and 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 find out you know what's really happening out there with our sport, uh, and be, and to begin a dialogue. He doesn't have to agree with them on issues, but. I think it's important that he listens to to what they have to say. I think it's important that he uh, educates himself from their perspective rather than get a totally one-sided view uh, of of particular issues. Um, So, I mean, I think the next several months uh, ought to be spent just, you know, getting out there and meeting people on both sides and talking about the issues and just informing himself so that he can then, you know, begin to craft a strategy which he can present to his own membership. Paul Kelly of College Hockey Inc. on Puck Daddy Radio with Wyshynski and Pizzo. One more quick one for you, uh, sir, before we let you go. Uh, In 2007, you were pretty adamant saying that you wanted to see the NHL back on ESPN, maybe in some sort of a partnership with Versus, sharing games, that sort of thing, kind of like how the NBA is on ESPN and also the Turner Networks. Do you still think it's vital for the NHL to get back on ESPN with the television contract up next summer? Um, You know, I, I... You know, sometimes you make comments, and then years later you look back at them and you say, "Eh, perhaps wasn't that that wasn't the smartest thing to say." I, you know, there was a frustration then, and I, it, it, it still exists now, although lesser, less than it was a couple of years back. And, and that is that um, our sport didn't get enough attention on television in the United States, and it was very frustrating for, for those of us that traveled frequently to go to hotels and not be able to get an NHL game, you know, on any of the television networks. Um, I will say that Versus has done a much better job uh, as time has gone by. They have far more games on TV. Their production values are much, much better. The partnership with NBC has worked well. Uh, I mean, I don't know what's going on in terms of the discussions, but frankly, if I was about to make a prediction, I would say that ESPN will get involved in the mix. I I think the NHL will probably come up with some type of an agreement whether they continue the partnership with uh, with um, Comcast versus NBC, and also slice a piece of the pie off, and 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 at least give ESPN an opportunity that they are committed to the sport, that they're willing to put it on the main network, that they're willing to give it you know uh, quality time across you know uh, their broadcast channels, um, and uh, if it goes well, I can see the uh, you know, NHL trying to split it up. We see that in basketball. We see that in football and baseball here in the United States. There are mul- multiple broadcast partners that get involved, and that's good for the sport. So I, I don't think there's any reason. Not everybody, you know, they're all going to they're all going to want the same thing. They're all going to want to broadcast the Winter Classic, and they're all going to want to broadcast <laughs> the Stanley Cup Finals, and that's the tension. And that obviously can't be yet. I mean, you do have to give some seniority to your loyal partners who have been with you throughout and so i don't think espn can walk in and expect that it's suddenly going to get the winter classic or or the final game of the stanley cups but i think that uh, they would like to get some playoff coverage and i think there's room for them in the schedule to do that and i'd be surprised if the nhl doesn't uh, strike some type of an arrangement with espn all right paul kelly college hockey inc thank you so much for joining us on puck daddy radio and enjoy the world juniors sir we'll talk again soon Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Rob. Good to be with you. Happy holidays. You too. That was Paul Kelly, now with College Hockey Inc., former executive director of the NHLPA.